My name is Eli McManus, Private Eye, and I'm on the case. I'd finished up my first big job in the new city, but something just didn't seem right. I headed back to my apartment to see if there was any detail I had overlooked. First, I consulted the computer. If there's a case waiting for me out there, I'm bound to find it. I'm an expert hacker. Sure enough, the case of the foot sore floater. I just got a call from Johnny Jones. It seems every night someone or something is bruising Johnny's poor toes. It seems my cases get weirder every day. I should speak to Johnny Jones about who might be doing this wham bang toe job. I headed out to Johnny's straight away. This sounded like a very important case. Details could change at any moment. I needed to find out who was bruising toes. I found Mr. Jones outside of City Hall, which I thought was a strange place to meet. We went over the details of the case, and this is what I learned. Johnny has long had qualms with a certain next-door neighbor. Seems preposterous that the neighbor, Polly Maloney, would go on a nightly toe-smashing rampage, but who knows? I should speak to Polly Maloney about this accusation. Well, the case was in play. I said goodbye to Mr. Jones and went to see Polly. On my way up to Polly's place, I noticed something strange. It was a smell and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Maybe it was the smell of lies and betrayal. Or maybe it was just the smell of the greasy hipster who walked up next to me. There's no way to tell for sure. Turns out while I made my way to Polly's place, she had made a quick exit. What a slippery little suspect. I caught up with Polly half a block away, standing in the middle of nowhere, looking very suspicious indeed. Mm -hmm. I tried my powers of persuasion to see if I could coax out a confession. Turns out, the neighbor began cackling like a hyena who has had too much laughing gas at the dentist. It appears the real suspect is Johnny Jones. Every night, Johnny Jones sleepwalks and kicks a garden gnome. I should research sleepwalking a little bit at the local hospital to see if the facts line up. As I finished my interview with Polly, I finally realized what that bad smell was. It was me! I needed a shower like yesterday. I headed home quickly as I could, although I can't say I was the least bit embarrassed about this. I don't care what others think about me, and if I stink, so be it. After all, that's why I'm a lone wolf. That's why I live alone, work alone. I like the solitude. Maybe the stink will keep everyone away. <laughs> Nobody loves me! After I cleaned up dinner, I noticed that there was suddenly a chessboard in my apartment. How had this gotten here? I mean, my paranoia is not going to help this situation at all. But I'd had a long day. I'd solved my first case, I'd gotten my second, and although sleepwalking seemed like a strong possibility at this point, I was unfazed. After all, a case is a case is a case, and I would crack this one tomorrow. I woke up feeling full of energy, refreshed and ready to face the day. My first stop would be the hospital where I would research sleepwalking. And of course by first stop, I actually mean my first stop after breakfast, because I'm hungry. I may be a private investigator, not a baker, but I do make some good waffles. Now with a full belly, I could head to the hospital and research this quote-unquote sleepwalking. I headed to the hospital where I was greeted by a number of skeptical doctors. Turns out doctors don't take kindly to being privately investigated. According to the docs, the sleepwalking theory makes a lot of sense. Damn it! Foiled again! It seems Johnny Jones has consulted with the hospital before for sleepwalking. I should tell Johnny Jones that I solved the case. The more I thought about it, the more the sleepwalking theory did make a lot of sense. I guess those docs aren't quacks after all. Johnny, I've got some strange news for you. Your bruised toes? You're doing them to yourself, man. You gotta get some medication, maybe wear some mittens, sleep in a sleeping bag. We'll get you all patched up, buddy. Johnny Jones wasn't surprised to hear about kicking the gnome while sleeping. Doesn't change the fact that I was surprised by it all. The gnome is going to be padded to preserve Johnny's toes. I'm going to take my fee and look for my next case. 
On my way back home, I found a mysterious note left outside my apart- Oh, it just- it's just bills. I just have to pay bills. Eli McManus. P.I. Ah, getting home, I had trouble with the elevator. Turns out, living in a shitty apartment constitutes a sh generally shitty experience. I decided to cheer myself by not starting work on my next case quite yet, and sitting down for a nice little solitaire game of chess. As I played, I watched the day burn down outside my window. The city still had a lot of secrets left to uncover, and I was gonna find them all. Hey everyone, Sean B. Martin here. Thank you for watching the second episode of Eli McManus, Private Eye. I know I said that I wanted Prime to make this episode longer, and we tried. Believe me, we tried, but somehow it still ended up turning out at like five minutes. I have no idea how that happened. I'm going to recommend a slightly different technique for next week's episode. I think it will guarantee a longer episode. We'll see for sure next week. Make sure you look for the regular SVM Plays Sims on Wednesday. Like and favorite this video. Leave a cookie comment, if nothing else, and I'll see you next week.